Hey, what's going on everyone? It's James here and I just want to quickly introduce myself before we get started because I'm going to be going over the 10 tips on how to close more deals, right? So if you use these 10 tips, if you uh, take my suggestion, it's definitely going to help you increase your sales conversion. But before I jump into that, I just want to quickly introduce myself for some of you guys that don't know me. Uh, you probably bumped into me on Facebook or YouTube or some on social media and you're probably wondering like, who the heck is this dude? Right? And that's, it's a valid question. My name is James Ramos. I've been in the energy industry going on eight years now, right? It's been a while, right? And you know, time flies quickly, right? Especially when you're having fun. Um, I help local utilities and local governments with their energy efficiency rebate programs. I'm also BPI certified, meaning that I'm a home performance specialist. I do a lot of education and training on Facebook. I have, have a bunch of courses online. Uh, this is actually one of them, uh, but there are a bunch of other courses that I teach and, sp and specifically just for solar consultants to cut the learning curve, right? Because I wish that someone had a course like this and other courses that I had or that I have uh, when I first got started because uh, it was basically like OJT the whole time, right? I had a um, small little brief training when I first got started and then after that, it's like, you know what, go learn on your own right? But it's all good, right? I've I gone through it all, so hopefully this cuts the learning curve. But anyways, about me, about myself. So I know exactly what you guys are going through because I used to be a solar sales consultant just like you, right? So I know exactly what you guys are going through, right? Out in the field, I know how it is, how hard it is to generate leads. I know how hard it is when you're away from your family, you know, because you're sitting at the coffee table at 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the evening when a homeowner is trying to close a deal. I know exactly how you guys feel right and the purpose of these trainings is to definitely help you close more jobs so you guys can fulfill or reach your income goals right so jumping into the 10 tips and how to close more deals and if you guys implement this it's definitely going to help cut some of the learning curve because these are the things that uh that definitely help me i don't sell too much solar anymore but you know i, I still do once in a blue moon right but i hate that word selling because in the solar industry, you're not necessarily selling. I mean, if you're in the used car industry or you know, you're in the retail uh, industry, obviously you're selling stuff, right? But I hate using that word selling in our industry because you're not necessarily selling, right? You're an educator. But let me go ahead and jump into 10 tips on how to close more deals and hopefully this helps you guys out a bit. So tip number one, before entering, ask the homeowner if they want you to take off your shoes, right? Or if you don't ask a homeowner, make sure that you guys wear booties, right? Shoe covers. Because first impressions go a long way. And you only literally have one chance to make a good impression with a homeowner, right? Because I'm pretty sure you guys had contractors or people that came into your house and they just walked right in with their dirty shoes and you're like, hey, hold up, dude. Uh, please take off your shoes or, or wear some shoe coverage before you walk in, right? Because uh, for my house specifically, right, just talking to me personally, uh, I don't like people walking into my house with dirty shoes on, right? Because my kids are roaming around, they're crawling on the floor, and it's just, uh, you know, I, it's just not nice for someone to walk in the house with some dirty shoes on, right? So this is the first start to building a rapport with the homeowner. And there's three things that you're trying to do when you're building rapport, which is the know, like, and trust factor, Right, so if you ask the homeowner, hey, Mr. Homeowner, do you want me to take off my shoes um, before entering your house? It definitely shows that you respect their home. It's gonna go a long way during your consultation. Tip number two, set proper expectations, right? This is super, super important, right? Especially when the homeowner is ready to move forward, make sure you're always under promising and over delivering. Right, so what I mean by that is the homeowner tells you, you know what, James, one is the site survey, right? I'm gonna let the homeowner know, you know what, the site survey can take two to three weeks, but let me see what I can do. Let me call the office right now and see if I can get you scheduled a little bit sooner. Or they'll ask you in the lines of, how long is it gonna take to install a system, right? Normally it takes about four weeks, four to six weeks to install a system, but you want to under promise and over deliver and just let the homeowner know, you know what, it may take eight weeks or even longer, right? But if it's sooner, I'll definitely let you know, right? Because when that sixth week comes around 
and you call the homeowner and say, hey, you know what, Mr. Homeowner, I have some good news for you. I can actually get your system installed this week. You're going to look like a rock star, right? Because I see so many people over promising and can't deliver. And what's going to happen is you're going to make your homeowners very disappointed. And even if they decide to still install solar on their home, they're probably not going to give you a referral. So make sure that you're setting proper expectations and under promising and over delivering. Tip number three, you're an educator, not a salesman. The less you sound like a salesman, the more deals you're going to close, right? So make sure that you're building an authentic, let me repeat that again, an authentic relationship with your homeowner, right? Because the solar process is not really selling, right? It's educating homeowners and letting them decide at the end of the presentation whether or not solar is for them. And I see it so many times when people use the strong arm tactics or they go straight for the jugular. It doesn't work in this industry, right? I'm just letting you guys know, especially for the guys that currently sell you know using the strong arm technique maybe you came from you know used car sales or maybe car sales or retail it doesn't work in this industry right so make sure that you're building an authentic relationship with the homeowner giving them as much education or as much information as you can so they can make an informative decision whether or not solar's for them tip number four if you don't know the answer to a question, don't make one up. Because as a salesman in other industries, you may tend to make things up, right? Because I've been to so many cellular providers and I ask specific questions and they give me a specific answer, which sounds good. But when I have to call them out on that particular question I had, like later on down you know, the future, they can't you know, support their, their answer, right? So make sure that you're always telling the truth. I mean, that sounds pretty basic, right? But a lot of times you get desperate. Uh, you're, you know, almost closing the deal. You've been sitting at the coffee table, table for two or three hours and you stumble into one question you may not know. The best thing to do is don't make things up. Call your manager ask him or her to answer the question for you, right? So what you need to let the homeowner know is, Mr. Homeowner, that's an excellent question, but I'm not too sure how to answer that, but let me call my manager. I know he or she knows the answer to the question because I don't want to uh, lead you in the wrong direction, right? And your homeowner is gonna respect you for this and you're actually building more no like and trust factor just by telling the truth. Tip number five, when a homeowner has an objection, acknowledge that you understand their concern and then proceed to answering their objection, right? So don't get combative with the homeowner. As much as sometimes, you know, your blood starts boiling because they just don't quite get, you know, what you're trying to explain with a homeowner, you wanna make sure that you acknowledge their objection. Say, so, you know, Mr. Homeowner, I see where you're going with that and I totally understand why you feel that way, but this is the answer to that objection, right? Don't ever get combative with a homeowner because it's a losing battle because you want the homeowner to have the best experience as possible with you and you want the homeowner to eventually refer people because if a homeowner has a really poor experience with you, more than likely they're not going to sign a contract. And if they do, for whatever reason, they're not going to refer their friends and family, right? So make sure that you're acknowledging their objection, that you understand where they're coming from, and then proceed to answer their objection. Tip number six, never give a discount. Instead, give a rebate with some expectations on their end, right? So what I mean by that is when you give a a discount of say for example a thousand dollars right off the bat you're actually devaluing your service and you're devaluing your company right if the homeowner tells you, you know what James um, 
you're currently selling the solar system for twenty two thousand right now. Is there no way you could give me a discount of three thousand dollars and make it nineteen grand even? If you say yes to that, you're definitely devaluing yourself and your company, right? So instead, what you need to do is let the homeowner know, you know what? Let me see what I can do. Let me call my manager and see if he or she can give you a rebate. And what you need to do is jump on the phone and call your manager. And obviously, you're going to have this all pre-planned out beforehand, right? So what this is how it's going to pan out. Hold on one second, Mr. Homer, and let me call my manager. Do, 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 do. Hey, what's up, John? I'm here with Mr. Smith. Uh, they're super excited to move forward with solar. They just had a few questions. They just wanted to know if they can get a rebate. Um, you know, they l really love the system. Uh, they just wanted to know if they could get a you know a little rebate on the price. Ask Mr. Smith if he's able to get you 10 referrals. This is how it's going to sound. Hey, Mr. Manager, hold on one second. Let me ask Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, my manager wants to know, can you get 10 referrals for me today? You can. Awesome. Hold on one second. Hey, Mr. Manager, Mr. Smith said he could get me 10 referrals. Okay, hold on real quick, Mr. Manager. My manager also asked if you can host a solar party for us. So basically, we'll supply all the food. So basically, nothing is going to come out of your pocket. The only thing you need to do is invite your friends and your family and your neighbors. Uh, and we're going to have, set up a little tent and we're going to go over all their solar options uh, just like I did with you. Are you okay of having a solar party here at your house? Yes? Awesome. Yes, uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Smith said it's okay for us to have a solar party. Okay, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and let Mr. Smith know that. All right, Mr. Smith, this is what we can do. So with the exception of you providing us 10 referrals and hosting a solar party here at your house, we'll be able to give you a rebate of $1,500. Uh, here you go. Here's the form. Go ahead and sign right here that you acknowledge and you agree to these terms. Right, obviously you're gonna have these forms all laid out, and like I said, obviously you're gonna have this pre-staged uh, with your manager before beforehand, right? Beforehand, you don't want to try to do this all on the fly. Normally, what we do is we have an application uh, with all the exceptions and everything that the homeowner agreed to do uh, and able to get this rebate, and we have them sign it, right? So don't ever ever just give a discount blindly to a homeowner make sure to make them work for it because they're going to value that even more, right? And you don't want to devalue your service by just knocking off a couple thousand off the price off the bat. Tip number seven, perception goes a long way. You're a professional, right? You're definitely playing in the big leagues, right? So people naturally don't trust other people if they look sloppy, right? It's just all perception, Right. If you have your, your shirt untucked, if you have stains on your shirt, and even if you have a dirty monitor, right? But, uh, because obviously you're going to be presenting information to your homeowner, whether via your computer or your tablet. Just make sure that it's nice and clean, right? Because, like I said, perception goes a long way. And if you look sloppy, it's just a really bad perception with the homeowner, right? So you're a professional. Make sure that your shirt's tucked in, your your computer screen is clean, and you're smelling good. Because if you look good, you feel good, you do good. Tip number eight, get an emotional attachment on what they plan to do with the money they save by going solar. So if you can hang the energy savings into an emotional attachment, at the end when you're asking for business, they're going to remember what they're going to use that money for. It's going to be one of their main reasons why they move forward with solar, right? Because, you know, a couple dollar savings or saving the environment all sounds great, right? But if you can get them to hang that energy savings onto an emotional attachment, they're going to remember that at the end of the consultation when you're asking for business. You're going to tell the homeowner, that's awesome. So it looks like you're going to save 50 bucks a month. All we need to do is put your signatures right here, and it's going to be so amazing when you can take your kids to, you know, uh, Disneyland, 
if you can hang that dollar amount to an emotional attachment, you're definitely going to see your close rate increase. Tip number nine, ask for referrals and a review, right? Because I see this a lot with consultants is they never ask for a referral, right? During the consultation, they say, you know what? I'm going to wait till the site survey or I'm going to wait till the system's installed. But you know what? You should also do that in those phases. But you should always ask after your consultation, hey, Mr. Homeowner, who do you know that may benefit to uh, reducing their energy bill and saving some money on their electric bill, right? Do you have a friend, a family, a neighbor that may benefit by going solar? You ask for referrals every step of the way, right? Ask them during a consultation. Ask them if you have to do a follow-up call. Ask them doing the site survey. Ask for a referral, you know, uh, during installation. Ask for a referral after installation, right? You want to be able to ask for referrals every step of the way. And also, ask for a review. So you want to make sure you sign up for some sort of platform where you can be reviewed, right? Because this is going to be a amazing tool or a powerful tool that you can share with homeowner and say, hey, Mr. Homeowner, check out my reviews, right? I have like 50 reviews. It's all five stars. And just check out what homeowners are saying about me, right? Because at the end of the day, the homeowner is buying from you because a lot of the companies out there, their service, their products, their warranties, they're all basically the same, right? And what's going to stand you apart from everyone else else is if you have reviews from your homeowner right so make sure you look for, for a platform that uh, homeowners can you know make reviews and also you know maybe create a website right create a website where homeowners can actually review your service and finally tip number 10 don't let the homeowner off the hook that easily a lot of consultants lets their homeowner off the hook way too easily at the end of the consultation. What I mean by this is, you know what, the consultation is wrapping up and you're asking for the sale and it'll sound something like this, right? Hey, Mr. Homeowner, so what do you think, right? You're playing that quiet game and whoever talks first uh, loses kind of thing, right? And the homeowner tells you, you know what, James, I'm just not quite ready, right? Let me think about it. And a lot of rookies and a lot of new consultants out there, they just say, you know what, Mr. Homeowner? Okay, cool, right? They close their laptop and they walk away, right? So don't let your homeowners off the hook that easily. What you need to let the homeowner know is, hey, you know what? That sounds all cool. Um, definitely, if you need to think about it, you know, I'll, I'll give you some time to think about it. But what specifically do you need to think about? Right, you need to dive in deeper and ask more questions. Right, they tell you, you know what, I have to talk to my wife about it. Right, a lot of times you're gonna close up your your laptop and walk out the door. Right, so what you need to do is ask the homeowner, what specifically do you need to talk to your wife about? Because if you dive in deeper, most of the time you're gonna be able to get the answers out of the homeowner, whatever the reservation is, and most of the time, they're going to be signing a contract, right? Rather than you just walking out the door and telling the homeowner, oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, give me a call when you're ready or whatnot. You need to dive in deeper and find out exactly what that reservation is. And obviously, if you dug in deep enough, you're going to find out exactly why they're hesitant to sign a contract right then and there. That concludes the 10 tips on how to close more deals. So hopefully you guys got some value out of this video. So make sure you guys go back and read each one of these tips and start rehearsing them for yourself. And for those of you guys that want to dive in deeper, make sure you click the link somewhere around this video. I have more courses and strategies and how you can increase your sales conversions. Um, like I said, go ahead and click the link somewhere around this video. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye for now.